And so I took that knowledge to run my own ads for my company, things like that, that I would learn from jobs to kind of, you know, like sales and then and put that into sales in, in my company at Market Nights and things like that. So I'm always trying to learn from different aspects of my life and like kind of funnel that back into my company. Cause I, I do want like my company to be kind of like a extension of myself, my personality. Cause that's what people are, are buying at the end of the day is the people behind the product. Welcome to the My SGV podcast. Our mission is to capture and share the stories of the people of the San Gabriel Valley. We believe our diversity is what makes the SGV great. And no matter where you're from in the San Gabriel Valley, you will feel welcome. All right, SGVers, welcome back to another episode of the My SGV podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We do appreciate you spending this time with us. If you are a returning listener, thank you for joining us again. We're excited to bring you another guest from right here in the San Gabriel Valley. And if this is your first time listening, thank you for checking us out. And we hope that you uh, find these stories uh, interesting about the people, you know, just right here in your backyard. So uh, stay tuned for that. Well, Scott, we've talked about this before, but I don't know how in depth we've talked about my love for spicy food and and your previous love for spicy (laughs) food. So you you used to like spicy, yes? Uh, I I did. I used to eat a lot of spicy and I can't eat it so much now. And I'm wondering maybe our guest has some insight on (laughs) uh, how people's abilities change over years to to take it. When when did you start first start getting into spicy food? Probably when I lived in Korea and then uh, and then China. There were just some really hot, sp- and, and I lived in Sichuan, uh, China, which is home of very spicy food. Uh, so that's where I would eat a lot of it. But I was younger then, and I don't, I don't, I can't take spicy now at all. And, and Sichuan is like a numbing spice. Is that that's how yeah, they describe yeah, it, right? Yeah, I would say it's numbing, yes. It's different than other spices. And, and when you say you can't take it now, what, what does that mean? Like it, it's too much on your tongue, it upsets your GI tract, or like, what does that mean? Yeah, both of those. Both of those things. <laughs> yeah. oh. and, and anything else you may think of. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think I shared this on the show before. I really, I was a chili head. I was seeking out, you know, hotter and hotter stuff because I was getting accustomed to it. And then um, that spicy ramen challenge just really destroyed destroyed my, my oh, whole gut. yeah, and, right. Uh, after that, even like sriracha, which I don't consider spicy, was just too much for me. So you don't consider that spicy. I like sriracha. I will put it in, you know, my soups and stuff. But you, but that's not really considered spicy by, I, I would, by chili heads. Yeah, anyway. I wouldn't consider that. I mean, you know, some of, sometimes the fun is is seeing other people in pain and maybe experiencing <laughs> the pain yourself, you know. I remember. Uh, well, there's another <laughs> word for that, you know. Yeah, like a... Like a uh, is it a sadist? Yeah, that's, or, or, or yeah, math, yeah, yeah, yeah. The you know um, Kyoto from uh, Kyo, uh, Kyo Suzu, he would always try to you know hide habanero in my in my sushi. And oh yeah, we would go back and forth um, messing with each other. He would give me his hottest thing, and I would you know it would be hurting, but I would look at him and you know say with a straight face that you know that's nothing. Oh really? <laughs> Just yeah. to you know annoy him a little bit, but. <laughs> <laughs> but inside you were suffering. I, I was, yeah. And, uh, you know, the aftermath is always horrible too, but um, just in those moments of interaction and, you know, having fun with someone uh, with the, the chili and the spice is always, it was always kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, as I mentioned, Kill Suzu, but Kill Suzu is, is one of my favorite uh, restaurants of all time or sushi places. But if you're interested in that or other things in the San Gabriel Valley, don't forget to check out San Gabriel Valley Now, your source for city news, announcements, events, special savings, and everything SGV. Check them out on Instagram, sgv.now, and read their magazine on their website, sgvnow.com. And remember Paris Spaghetti as well. <laughs> yeah, Paris Spaghetti. So sorry, the last episode I, you know, I didn't mention them, but thank you again to Paris Spaghetti, uh, San Gabriel specifically, who sponsor the uh, refreshments and treats for our guests on every episode. Uh, check them out. They're on Las Tunas and Mission um, in that little uh, southeast corner of that intersection, Paris Spaghetti. Thank you to them. Well, that brings us to our guest today. So the connection here is the spice, and I'm interested to, to have this conversation about spicy foods and spice and all that. His name is 
Ryan Fletes. He is the co-founder of Camp Scoville. Ryan, welcome to the show. I'm happy to be here. Nice Thank to meet you. you guys. Yeah. So uh, we've been talking about <laughs> yeah. spice, right? And I asked yeah. you before the show, how would you describe your, your product or your company? So I would best describe it as an alternative to hot sauce. That's kind of what we've kind of preached to people is that it's a new way of enjoying spicy food. So, you know, traditional hot sauce, you put it on your meal after, right? You put it on your breakfast burrito. It's great. I mean, I love hot sauce. My brother loves hot sauce. But we're like, what if there's like a healthier alternative that didn't have, you know, because once you get into the really spicy hot sauces, there's a lot of water, uh, vinegar that's put into it to help preserve it kind of as like a filler ingredient. So we're like, what if we just created a healthy alternative with zero sugar that focused on the pepper itself and the flavor to just enhance meals you can cook with it or you could use it as a regular condiment. So that's kind of how we came up with Camp Scoville and kind of expanded our flavors from there. Hotter peppers, a little bit variety of peppers as well to awesome. just trying to get into that hot sauce area. But it's all powder. It's all powder form. So <clears throat> we're eventually thinking about making a hot sauce, but we kind of just wanted to be a little bit different, kind of show people that, you know, this is a more versatile product that you could use on your hot, uh, instead of hot sauce. So that's kind of was like our main goal with the company. When I saw it, I was like, wow, this is really unique. And then my mind in instantly went to all the things that you can do with it. Like you could bake with it. Like you can make savory, yeah, you know, treats definitely. or you can make uh, sweet treats, I think. right? Yeah, with it. yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, I think like one thing that appeals to people is like a common thing right now is the air fryer, right? Everyone has an air fryer. They use the air fryer. It's quick. It's easy. Um, like as simple as you throw in some frozen meal, right, that you want to cook quickly. You just throw a little bit of Scoville on it. And now it has some kick like a chicken nugget now is a spicy chicken nugget like that easily so that's kind of our, our whole goal is just making it quick and easy for people to enjoy their food in a new spicy way mm. well ryan the show is called the my sgv podcast uh, what is your connection to the san gabriel valley so i've lived here for a while now um kind of grew up here spent a lot of time going to the monrovia fair uh night market as well definitely came here for the food though mm. uh that's probably like the number one draw i think in the area that I would say even though I know it's known that the food's great in SGV, um, I'd say it's still underrated because I feel like a lot of people go out to LA for food when they could stop a little bit shorter and come here, you know, for all the great food. Um, so that's kind of my connection. Um, I've lived here for a while now. I actually live in San Gabriel. I mean so for a while. So are you originally not from San Gabriel? I'm, I'm originally from the Inland Empire and then I moved here. Okay. Yeah. From the Inland Empire, I moved over here. This is like where I, I've kind of grown my business. Um, kind of connected with other small businesses to kind of grow my brand, grow their brand. Um, so I feel really connected to the city. The city has shown me a lot of support uh, with my company, other businesses, you know, introducing my product into their menus and their, uh, their different um, products as well. So that's kind of been like a really good connection with me in the city. Well, that's interesting that the San Gabriel Valley is, is now actually drawing people because of the food scene. Yeah. I mean, I, so a lot of people have never necessarily like that I talk to that aren't from the city have necessarily been to like San Gabriel or might they might have been to like Pasadena yeah. or they've passed through right but um you know I take them to some food spots around the area and they're like oh man like I didn't even know like this existed yeah. you know like these uh wide variety of options I mean you go down valley you have like a million different options yeah. for any kind of food really how did you choose San Gabriel um well, first it was because the area, I did like the area, living situation. I live with my girlfriend. Um, she also got a job in Rosemead in the in, in near area from where we live. That's kind of what first drew me in. And then we were just going to stay here temporarily at first, but we really kind of fell in love with the city and the area. And now I can't really see myself out of SGV. I kind of want to grow here, grow my business here and really try to expand it. Is your business in San Gabriel or um, one of the other cities? Um, in nearby? San Gabriel, we do have like um, some connections still to the Inland Empire and even up to Orange County. But San Gabriel is kind of like the home base for my uh, company. Ryan, were you always interested in spice or like how did yeah. that have developed yeah, in your so, life? Yeah, um, so me and my brother were always interested in hot sauce. And so my brother's my business partner and my brother's brother-in-law, who is like a family friend. His name's Jeffrey. Um, he's also our business partner. We're all very into hot sauces. Um, if you're familiar with the show Hot Ones, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar. <laughs> um, it's like a, a show where they, you know, 
try different hot sauces, hotter and hotter hot sauces. And so we'd buy that and try it. And some of the like hotter ones were like kind of, kind of gross, you know, like they were hot, but like they the didn't. bomb, Did the, you, the, the bomb. bomb yeah. 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 Have you tried it before? It I have not, but they, the, everybody in the show is like, it just doesn't taste that good. Yeah. And so we're like, you know, you have these great peppers and like, if you've ever had like a actual hot pepper, like by itself, it does have like great flavor to it. Like you, you get a good flavor profile of the pepper, but these hot sauces didn't really deliver that. And so me and my brothers were always like competing on, you know, who could have the hotter hot sauce, like <laughs> who could, who could handle it. Um, so that kind of started the, the love for it. And then definitely, um, growing up, my grandfather was like huge hot sauce fan. Um, he would pour hot sauce and his milk and his orange oh, juice, wow. like next level stuff. Yeah. So like that kind of like was instilled in us at a young age, you know, to try different spicy foods. So I think that's kind of where it grew from. And then it's just been growing ever since. Who's the, uh, who can handle the, the hottest stuff? Um, I would say our other business partner, Jeff, um, he, he can really handle the hottest stuff. He's also the, st uh, the one that curates all our stuff. So he's the one that's, um, you know, testing different blends, different seasonings, different peppers. So I would say he has like the biggest, um, he can handle it the, the easiest for sure. You, you know, some of those hot sauces cheat and they use like a uh, cap capsaicin extract. Yeah. And it's like, almost, what is that? It's like a enhancer just to like enhance uh, the heat without really. Oh, it's to. not a spice. It's not like, um, that's another thing that we try to focus on. If you look at like a lot of condiments in your, in your kitchen, in your cabinet, um, you know, there's a lot of ingredients that you don't even really know what they are, you know? So that's another thing that we were trying to avoid is like adding in these <clears throat> ingredients that just kind of add to it yeah. for no reason, you know, corn just filler, syrup and corn <laughs> syrup, uh, xanthan gum, uh, you know, just a, a lot of different stuff that. What would be spicier, uh, the actual pepper or the sauce or the powder that comes from it? I mean, I think the, obviously the hottest you can get is the pepper itself. But I think in season, in a seasoning form, like gr grinded down, um, it's actually hotter than in hot sauce. Um, like I said, like they do add a lot of water and vinegar and stuff that kind of dilute, I would say the taste and some of the heat even. Um, so I would say like powder form, you're getting like, like you actually know, like when you have like a habanero, like this is what a habanero tastes like, you know, like you actually get that taste of it versus like some of these hot sauces, you might not get that mm -hmm. same experience. So are your powders uh, just purely the pepper or? So no, so like we have, obviously the first ingredient is the pepper itself. And then we have like garlic salt, mustard seed, uh, different things just to add a little bit of flavor to it. Um, we don't use sugar, but we use monk fruit, which adds a little bit of sweetness to it as well. Oh, dried monk fruit. Dried, dried monk fruit, wow. yeah, That's as well. And it, it, it actually goes a long way. Like it does, it does help add to the flavor for sure. What's your favorite chili? I would, I mean, I would say probably the ghost I, for me, like what? an actual ghost pepper has the best flavor profile. Wow. Um, I really like adding ghost in like most of my things. Um, so I would say ghost pepper is probably my favorite. Have you had a ghost pepper before? I, I've had it dried and smoked. Okay. And yeah. then I ground it up myself and then added it to stuff. Yeah. Um, it had a really nice smoke. I mean, it's extremely hot. So ghost pepper it comes is quick too. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's above a habanero and below the the Carolina Reaper. So it's it's oh. very hot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We so we could kind of have like our original four that we started with when we first started the company. We had four flavors. Um, it was like a Thai chili, which is probably the heat you're more expected to get like at restaurants and stuff. Like their spicier option is usually like a Thai chili, especially obviously at Thai restaurants. And uh, then it's a ghost pepper. Uh, scorpion pepper, which I don't know if you've heard of, wow. is like, for some people, it's on par with the reaper pepper because depending on like your palate, your taste buds, some people actually find the scorpion pepper hotter than the reaper pepper. So it's kind of up to interpretation. By Scoville units, the reaper pepper is hotter, which is our fourth one. So we actually have a little bit of scorpion in the reaper bottle as well. So that one is, uh, if you can handle that one, you could pretty much... I'd like to say you can handle anything wow. out there, hot sauce wise, if you can handle the reaper. Well, you guys just bypass like habanero, serrano, and hab so we do have a little bit of habanero and ghost in our ghost pepper one. So there is a little bit of habanero. So we do kind of mix the peppers a little bit to an extent. Um, 
because I, I do love the flavor of a habanero. That was like my grandpa's yeah. favorite pepper. He would just eat them straight up. They had a little tree. He would oh. eat it straight off. Yeah, so I do love the habanero. So we do add that a lot like for flavor. And uh, we have like a serrano pepper one that I really love serrano peppers as well. Um, that has a really good flavor. We add that. Habanero is my favorite. I love the flavor of it. I made a, I started doing a homemade sriracha, like uh, oh, yeah. fermenting it with, um, I, I think I did Fresno chilies, um, maybe some bell pepper just for body. And then I made a little batch of habanero for myself. Yeah. From, you know, fermented yeah. it like yeah. the same style. And I had that with, uh, from the recommendation of my wife, because it's a fruit, I had it with vanilla ice cream. Was it good? Did you like it? Amazing. Yeah. It's that, that kind of like, <laughs> you wouldn't think of it. I just made ghost pepper French toast recently. Oh, oh yeah. I saw uh, just, that on your yeah, social media. Yeah. Just to like kind of try it out. And you wouldn't think, you know, you got syrup, you got sugar, and then you have this really insane pepper, but it kind of balances out nicely and it kind of gives you that like sweet and spicy. So do you, do you market only to chili heads or uh, can the average person use this? Yeah. So I would say we market to chili heads when it comes to our more intense peppers. But, uh, I think like the best way to explain like how even our lowest level can apply to people is I have a lot of friends that obviously when I was first starting this business supported me just to support, right. They weren't maybe super interested in spicy food, but they just kind of supported just to support. So they bought like the lowest level, like the Thai chili, which I think is pretty doable for most people. And from there, they were able to like work their way up, like build a tolerance and work <laughs> their way up to other levels. So we call it like the gateway bottle. <laughs> um, so like once you've had that one, you kind of can like build your tolerance up. Like I've seen it, I've seen it happen. It's even for me, like work, I was like ghost pepper was my hottest. And now I'm like able to go even hotter, like on a regular basis. So oh, wow. um, when did you start your company? In uh, 2020, actually mid pandemic, it was kind of like a rough time uh, between I, I was out of a job because of the pandemic, I worked at a restaurant, was out of a job for obvious reasons. And I had just graduated school, but no one was hiring at that time. So I had this like degree. I really had nothing going for me. I would say, I know a lot of people didn't at the time. And so my brother kind of came up to me and he was like, Hey, Jeff made this like seasoning just like for us to use. And I think it's really good. I think like we could sell it. He's like, you should try it. So I tried it. And as soon as I tried it, I tried it on some pizza and I was like, oh, this stuff is like a lot different than anything I've had. Like it was easy to use and it, it added a lot of flavor to my meal. And so from there, we kind of got the ball rolling in 2020. And then I want to say towards the end of the year, we started like officially declared as a business and opened up uh, our online shop. Pizza. I never thought of that, but pizza is a great application for what you got. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Pizza Cart in Monterey. Um, it's a pizza shop. Uh, we have a bottle there. We collaborate with a lot of pizza shops just to like have our bottles out for customers <laughs> to use. And like we have this this brewery that we're at that sells pizza and we have to like replace our bottle like every single week because they're going through a whole bottle like the customers. Of which are, one? Of uh, the Thai, we have the Thai chili one and the ghost pepper one out. <laughs> so we just keep like the two lowest levels, you know, just to. So give me some perspective because I know I would go into a pizza shop you yeah. know, in New York or any place. Yeah. And they have, uh, they have, you know, chili powder of some sort. Yeah. What is that? And, S and how is your product different? Yeah. So that is like a uh, basic, basic, um, red pepper flakes. Okay. Um, yeah. so they're not, they're definitely spicy. I mean, to most people, but I, I wouldn't say they're adding a lot of flavor to your meal. They're definitely adding a little bit of kick to your pizza. Like I used to use red pepper flakes, uh, nothing against that. But uh, I would say like our product is a little bit more enriches the flavor a little bit and you really feel like a different sense of heat than like just your regular little tingle for maybe a red pepper flake. It's a little bit more intense, a little bit uh, adds a lot of flavor. I mean, on pizza, like that's probably the best thing you can put our product on is on pizza. Mm. I, I find that red pepper flake, however they give it to you, whether it's like in a jar packet, or yeah. packet, I find it to be old and flavorless and, and hard. And oftentimes there's like a lot of seeds in there which is like not really pleasant you know i have Definitely. to end up putting a whole bunch just to just to feel it yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's also a problem it, it definitely dries out big time i feel like and uh when i put it on i feel like i mean like the pizza and then i have these flakes pepper flakes like on top layered on top when i feel like you put camp scoville on it it kind of like seeps into the pepperoni seeps into the cheese it's very fine 
And so it feels a little bit more like it's like they made the pizza like this, you know, then I, then I just used it as a condiment on top. So how did you start marketing? Uh, started marketing mainly through social media. Um, tried to stay consistent with that, posting on social media, uh, going to a lot of markets in the area, a lot of word of mouth, obviously, getting into different restaurants. That's kind of like our main focus now too, is just to get our product out to as many people as possible. Because we feel like we have a good enough product that if we get it in front of the right people, they will respond to it. Um, so like our whole approach is basically just getting our product out there to as many people and just getting, you know, referrals through word of mouth or through people trying it at a restaurant and then going home and buying it, which we do uh, see a lot of. So your company is Camp Scoville. Camp Scoville, yeah. Uh, where did that name come from? So Scoville is how you measure um, heat units for like different peppers. So like the Reaper pepper is like over a million uh, Scoville units. So it's like a measurement for heat. Um, so that was kind of like the first name. And then we're like, how do we get like a little bit of a theme with like our branding? And so we kind of thought of this camp theme. So like the lowest level is called Boy Scout. <laughs> oh, and then the ghost pepper one is called ghost stories. And it's kind of like a, a couple around a campfire and they're like eating a, a hot pepper. And then, uh, for scorpion, we have grizzly inferno. It's like two grizzly bears on a lake. And then a reaper is like reaper trails. So it's like a, a, like a spooky trail with like a reaper on it. So we just try to like, we really focused on the branding when we first made the mm -hmm. company because there's a million hot sauces, a million different condiments out there. So we really wanted to stand out. Like if they saw us on a shelf, if they see us online, they like, okay, this is different. This is like interesting at least, you know? Yeah. And so that was kind of like our goal. So we really focused a lot on the branding and still do. And is the powder a revolutionary change? It's, it's not necessarily a revolutionary change. I think what's more of a revolutionary change is people using it over hot sauce because I think a lot of people that we've, you know, we reach out to our customers, get feedback, um, people that have purchased that, you know, we don't know already. And uh, a lot of them say, you know, like I've, I have, haven't used my hot sauce in a couple of months because I have this product that I could cook with and I could use a lot easier, you know, and it doesn't change the temperature of your meal. Sometimes you have a hot sauce in the fridge or in the cabinet, and then you have a, a warm burrito, and then you're putting on this cold mm. hot sauce on it. So I think it appeals a little bit differently to yeah. people. There are a few products uh, similar, but not, but that don't use uh, the variety of peppers we do and uh, offer like the quality of taste that we do. So that's kind of like where we're trying to make a change in the game, I guess mm. you could say. Are there warnings on your? Yeah, we do have warnings, <laughs> okay. especially. And then on all uh, online orders, uh, we have a little warning, just like, you know, it is a hot pepper. So, you know, keep away from your eyes, you know, just like simple warnings that everyone should have <laughs> abide to. But you never know, you know, you touch something and then you rub your eye and then yeah. all of a sudden, you know. Yeah. So we do have warning and we do have insurance as well. <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to build up your tolerance so that you can enjoy regularly? the Carolina Reaper level? Um, I wouldn't say I, I eat it too often, but I can enjoy it without like needing to rush to get like a glass of water or a glass of milk. I can like eat it. I do put it on like pretty often, especially when I'm creating like content and stuff. I, I eat it. I'm not going to waste food. <laughs> mm. So I always uh, use like the hotter ones. So I have built a tolerance up to where now I can handle it pretty good. Like two years ago, I think a Reaper would have like really really crushed me but now it's like night and day from there have you ever eaten a raw like not, ghost not pepper or, or a reaper? not a reaper i've had habaneros um and uh this one pepper called little murphy that uh was grown and i've had that but never like top tier i don't think i would <laughs> i don't think i would touch like a reaper pepper i think that'd be a little bit much <laughs> mm. yeah I, I i brought in a little jar of reaper sauce to to kill suzu and we put it on a little toothpick, just the toothpick, and put it on our tongue. It, it was too intense. Intense, yeah, yeah, really, really intense, and and mostly pain. Like I didn't, I don't remember the flavor. Yeah, you'd, <laughs> you'd be surprised though. Like the tolerance people have. Like uh, my friend's dad, you know, they they bought the Reaper trails, and uh, he dips fruit into it, into the Reaper. Yeah, like that. Like some people have an insane tolerance for heat, where they're able just to eat it, like 
you know, like he's eating chips, like he's dipping mm, fruit in really? this reaper. Like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, you also have a more mild one. I, re I think I saw like a lemon pepper. So we have a lemon pepper that we, we just dropped and that one's very mild. It has a, it has a Serrano peppers in it. And so that one's really mild with the lemon. It does kind of mask a little bit of that heat. Uh, it does give you a little good kick. There was no really uh, spicy lemon pepper seasonings out there. Obviously, you know, like your kinders, your basic lemon peppers. Uh, and then we don't use any added sugar. So that's where we're also different from lemon pepper. But that is our most mild. That one I would like to bring for you because I think uh, you'd be able to handle that one if you're yeah. willing to take it on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that I could maybe take. Yeah, yeah try a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it should be good. The, the ghost pepper, I mean, that's 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 usually pretty pretty spicy yeah, yeah the, the ghost pepper it is um i would say that one though like you do build like a pretty good tolerance with i mean i would i would like to bring that for you to try as well <laughs> because i think you'd be surprised that you'd be able to like handle it well i i, I do uh i love spice like i said the, the ghost pepper that i have in my house is, is the smoked one and I, I crush it up i do have a dried carolina reaper oh, in my house and i, I crushed it up for for a party and I put a warning. I was, you know, yeah. And uh, a few people didn't didn't eat that, and they were they were really hurting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's also those people that think they can handle it, and then they try it, and then, you know, trying to prove themselves, and then it's like it's a different beast though when you're when you're dealing with those really hot peppers. Oh, yeah. It's like completely different beast. That capsaicin extract that I uh, talked about. Some of them it says like weapons grade. Like you're talking about 10 million Scoville units, and it's actually not meant for human consumption. And they may say something like one drop for like a five gallon uh, amount of sauce, one drop. Yeah. And wow. it still is unbelievably hot. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. What, now what about in your, is it a factory that you? We, we bottle it at a commercial kitchen. So we, kitchen? we rent a uh, time at the kitchen uh, that we bottle at. So we're like, we have a, what's called a priority food registration, which is like all this paperwork we had to handle to like legally sell food online you know uh, okay so we're like completely uh legal with everything on that on that front and so we have to bottle at this commercial kitchen bar health care health code if people uh, your workers touch the spice as you said you know you can't go from your hand you know to yeah. touch it to your eye but yeah. uh do they have you know conditions skin conditions or no you know, what are the what are the yeah um, i mean whenever that, whenever we do bottle we always wear gloves uh we wear um mask as well i mean we started during COVID, so that was like already a thing yeah. but we kept it because we're like oh it's beneficial because especially like on habanero or ghost in spice form when it gets in the air it can start making you like sneeze you know like you're all everything starts acting up so we do that. Sometimes we have uh, glasses as well, like protective eyewear uh, when we're bottling just to like cover all bases, yeah, right. full apron. And then we usually change our clothes like right after, you really? know, that. just because uh, when you're dealing with that much spice, you know, things could get in the air and stuff. And just yeah. you don't want to be like, oh, I rubbed my, my shirt on my eye. And then all of a sudden, like your eyes like acting up, you know? So. so it can be somewhat of a dangerous place, huh? Yeah, I, I would say like when you're bottling it and dealing with that much pepper yeah. and stuff, then yeah. But we take all the precautions necessary to make yeah. sure that, you know, nothing happens. <laughs> but Russell, you said like one drop in how much? Uh, I, I'm just making this up. Yeah. I, but I think it, it's like about maybe a five gallon bucket, five gallons worth. Really? And yeah. it would... It, it doesn't would, take much. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. And and it would be probably still too hot. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just one little drop. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're talking about like, I think mace or, or you know, weapons grade uh, pepper spray is about 5 million Scoville units. Nothing in nature gets that hot. So you're, you're talking about like they're manufacturing this. Oh, so specifically. mace. Yeah. Mace would uh, be measured on the Scoville yeah. unit. So I think weapons is like 5 million and above. Oh. And some of the extract, it like hits like 10 million. Yeah. And the hottest pepper is like 1.2 or maybe, I don't know yeah, what I think, it is. I think it's 1.2 million. Yeah. Really? Pepper X? Yeah, Pepper X. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, and and a Serrano, which most people who even like spice, that's like starting to get hot, is up to 20,000. Really? Yeah. 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 And a ghost, ghost pepper is like, you know, 500,000, maybe more. Wow. Yeah. Getting <laughs> really, really, really hot. There's a little are. bit of a feeling you get though when you eat that like insanely spicy food, you know? I mean, oh, yeah. people have talked about it. It's like somewhat of a, 
I don't want to say like a euphoria feeling, but you do feel a little bit like um, it's an endorphin rush. Endorphin rush from oh, it, yeah. Really? Yeah. I think that's why people get addicted to it. Oh, and, people and get out, addicted to spices. Yes, or, and, and seek out hotter and hotter spice because they no longer get that same rush. rush. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's and, definitely, and that's what's happening with Ryan. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm still he's chasing so, it. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna be like just eating straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're gonna see. Pepper we're eggs. gonna see you. You know, walking. You know, on a street someday. You know, having a lot of spice. <laughs> spice addict. <laughs> yeah, I'm, spice. I'm a spice addict. <laughs> well, Ryan, we ask each guest to bring an item of significance with them. What did yeah. you bring with you today? So I brought a briefcase that was uh, actually given to me from my grandpa, who I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, he actually passed away a few months ago. And uh, when he gave me this, you know, I kind of used it for my work. And now I use it for Scoville when I'm on the go, going to restaurants, um, trying to pitch Camp Scoville. I always have this on me in my laptop, a few notes and things like that, some samples. It's kind of important to me because uh, me and my grandpa had a very close relationship. He kind of helped raise me growing up. And he's kind of like a lot of my personality I got from him. He's, he was very... Uh, confident person kind of radiated that confidence i always wanted to be him looked looked up to him and so like when i have this with me i feel like a little bit more confident a little bit more myself i think of him and uh it kind of instills that in me and i, f I feel like i'm like you know ready to take on my day when i have this on me wow awesome. yeah. yeah thanks did for he, sharing that did he yeah. use it he used it yeah he was actually a lawyer in mexico uh this oh. is made in mexico um he was a lawyer over there, and so he did use it. It's got some uh, wear and tear. I yeah, but it's in very good shape. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it looks pretty I need to find clean. a leather guy. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, But yeah, so yeah, I keep this with me. Um, I got a note from him, like one of his last uh, notes that, sorry, that he left me um, in there. Wow. And uh, so I, I just kind of keep that close to me. It's important to me. Yeah. But it, it means a lot to me. Yeah. It's really a unique, a unique piece. I've never seen a briefcase like in that style. I, I think mainly it's the the pockets in the front that yeah. they sort of pop out a little bit. Yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. I remember like uh, when I first saw it, it was like in his closet, buried, and he was showing me something else, and I was like, "Oh, what's that?" And he, I was I was pretty young, and he was like, "Oh, it's my old briefcase. Like, do you want it?" And I was like, "Yeah, it looks cool. Like, I like the orange look to it. It's kind of different, you know. Yeah. I've never seen a briefcase yeah. like that. So yeah, pretty unique. Yeah." yeah. <laughs> sounds like your grandpa was a pretty important figure in your life. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, he raised me. He was always like the kind of guy we'd go into like a, like a Carl's Jr. or something growing up and all the workers like know him and they remember him and stuff. So he kind of was like always, he was always talking to people, always, um, you know, radiating like positiveness and good vibes. And people remembered him, like wherever we went, like they would be like, oh, Rafa, this is his name, Rafael. You know, they would remember him wherever we went. Oh. And I remember as a kid, like looking up to him, like, oh, like, you know, this is how you should treat people. This is how you should enter a room. This is how you should like, does it, he never cared like what someone's job position was or status. He was always just himself and, you know, was just himself to everyone he met. Yeah. And so I really admired that, um, looked up to him a lot. Yeah. And he was the one who introduced you to eating spicy stuff. Yeah, me, I think me and all my cousins and, and my brother and my sister can attest to that is like, he was the first one that we're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know people even eat spicy food like this. Like, you know, putting hot sauce in his milk and his orange juice and stuff like that. Like yeah. next level stuff. And uh, even like, so we were able to like, um, you know, show him our product and he would, he would try be kind of like our taste tester for oh, our product. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he Could would he tolerate it. Yeah. So he would eat like the scorpion pepper one. He'd put it on some chilaquiles. I don't know if you guys are familiar with chilaquiles. Um, yeah. it's like a Mexican breakfast. It's like a mm. salsa tortillas. It's really good. You gotta mm. try it. You gotta yeah. try chilaquiles. Um, and he put that on there and I knew it was hot for him. Like I knew it was hot for him, but he wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't like give us the satisfaction of making a face, you know, oh, like yeah. he'd be like, yeah, pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> you know? But I'm like, I know that's hot. I know that one's hot for anyone, you know, like I know. So he would always, you know, put on that face, but yeah, definitely, you know, got that from him, like in my family for sure. 
yeah, that's that's a definite uh, Chilead thing to do is never yeah. never admit it's hurting you. Yeah. I'd be sweating in my whole face, <laughs> yeah. you know. He's like red in the <laughs> face. He's like, no, it's pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's no, like an old admitting. Monty Python movie where they <laughs> cut off the guy's arm. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's like his legs. Yeah. Says, oh, you know, bring it on. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Ryan, we're going to get into um, sort of more into your story and your business and what yeah. you have in plan. Uh, for the future, but let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Yep. At Wormuth Law, they believe that just because you speak a foreign language, come from a different culture, or simply don't know how to navigate the legal system, that should not prevent you from compensation from injury or receiving benefits. Their multicultural staff have been helping SGVers like you for over 38 years. Visit law888.com or call them at 626-784-7017 and tell them you heard about them on this podcast. All right, we're back with Ryan with Camp Scoville. Uh, Ryan, before the break, we're sort of uh, <laughs> laughing about the qualities of, of a chili head and, and never being able to admit that uh, something is actually yeah. hot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, before we get more into your story, uh, when we come back from the break, we'd like to ask a question from this card game here called Icebreakers. And they're just a little view into who you are as a person and us and for the listener to get to know us a little bit better. You can choose to answer it or not, so no pressure. So here we go. What state... Or country do you never want to go back to? Oh man, and this is a negative one. <laughs> yeah, that is. I All thought right. it was. Gonna... <laughs> I, I'm surprised. That... Um, well, here, I'll, I'll, I, I can one. start. I can start. Yeah, yeah. I never want to go back to Wyoming. Okay. It was just torture driving through there. I mean, I only drove through it, but never again. I yeah. mean, just like it's just ugly. hours of nothingness yeah yeah that's <laughs> that's yeah that's a good i would say man state or country country i don't have because i feel like every country i've been to i've really enjoyed my experience there state i would say um going to new jersey was kind of i i went to, i went to new york recently and uh, i was in new jersey actually for a few days and uh new jersey i was like you know i'd be okay never coming back here <laughs> like <laughs> what, i'll go to new, part of new jersey um it was near like where is it? It's um near the airport, near Newark. Oh, my yeah. girlfriend has family there. Oh. And so, you know, it was nice visiting with her family and everything. But the nearby area, I was <laughs> like, man, like the only thing good over here is like the gas is like $3. Yeah. <laughs> I get used to that. You know? <laughs> what about you, Scott? You know, I like everywhere I go for the most part, you know? I mean, like I would say, oh, Texas, same reason you would say Wyoming is because like I remember driving all the way across Texas, and it was horrible. <laughs> and it was it, like, no? oh, hot, <laughs> ugly, and it was, you know, like 20 hours or so, you oh, know. Oh, man, yeah. It's just, uh, it never ended. That'll make you hate anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but still, I mean, there's places in Texas I would love to visit. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't have a place. I'm sure there are places in Wyoming that are nice to visit. Yeah, uh, yeah even Jersey. Yeah. I don't want to trash on Jersey. It was still a great place, but if I had to choose one off yeah. the top of my head. Well, the pack is getting dwindled down, so this is yeah. <laughs> this is the, the best of, of what we've got left. So uh, for our listening audience or if you're watching on YouTube, what state or country do you never want to go back to? Let us know in the comments, and we'll be sure to uh, mention that in a future episode. Well, Ryan, back to you and your story. So uh, there must have been this process from you trying it at first and you're like, this is good. We can sell it to, to all the steps involved and, and, you know, finding the kitchen, getting other products, branding out there. Like, were you confident from the start that, you know, you were going to pursue this the whole way or, or how, how did that journey go? Yeah, I would say overly confident at the start, like um, a naive type of confidence. I think when you, well, a lot of people, when they're starting a business, um, you know, your main focus is on like, oh, like I could do this. You think of all the great things that could happen and then quickly like reality hits and then it's like, oh wait, legally we have to do all this paperwork and like we have to go over all these hurdles, you know, to get to where we even want to be. So I feel like I always had confidence that we were gonna get it done, but I think as time progressed, these problems start to appear just like any business. And that's kind of when like your, um, your loyalty to the business or your faith is like kind of tested because you're like, it's easy to just think, Oh, you know what? Maybe I should not do this. Maybe I should quit. But once you like persevere through those hurdles, like you could actually come out into like a really good 
spot. And that's kind of where we were as a business. What, uh, what was a major hurdle that, you know, may have wanted you to quit? Um, I would say that, you know, in California, owning a business is expensive for sure. Um, yeah. there's other States where it's much cheaper to do, but obviously like I love California, I love Southern California. And so like, you know, whether it's like the different fees, like an LLC, LLC fee every year, monthly kitchen fees to bottle the product, um, fees for inventory, like just the different fees of owning a business, uh, different licenses, um, a health department license, uh, safety certificate licenses, different licenses like that. It was like, I was like, man, I, I had no idea there was going to be this much. So paperwork. much regulation. <laughs> it's so you know, much regulation. You could yeah. go to Wyoming and there's no regulation. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. I think like a closest state where things are a little cheaper is like Utah to yeah. own a business. But yeah, um, yeah no, and they definitely don't make it uh, easy on people. No. And I think through the process, me and my brother were like, because it, there's nothing online that'd be like, how do you start a spicy seasoning company? Yeah. And like what, you know, there's nothing out there. We're like, maybe we should create how yeah. to do it, you know? But, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of resources. You for wrote us. your own script. Yeah. What, what experience did you have before 2020 that would have, um, helped you that did help you? Yeah. Um, I would say definitely, uh, going to school. Um, I was a business major and through there I was able to like kind of learn how to, um, you know, the business side of things like i wrote our business plan um and our articles of confederation for the company based off like what i learned in school um obviously like what you learn in school is you know you learn like the the bone the bare bones of things but yeah. not the real life experience so as i you know got through like my career field too every job i had i tried to pull from to like kind of how does this how do these skills help me into my business like i was a advertiser for a company and i did digital ads for a lot of years um, for different companies as like an agency. And so I took that knowledge to run my own ads for my company. Um, things like that, that I would learn from jobs to kind of, you know, like sales and then and put that into sales in, in my company at Market Nights and things like that. So I'm always trying to learn from different aspects of my life and like kind of funnel that back into my company. Because I, I do want like my company to be kind of like a extension of myself, my personality. Cause that's what people are, are buying at the end of the day is the people behind the product, um, I think is super important. So I'm just trying to, you know, be in line with my goals and my business goals to, you know, hopefully succeed. What do you do? Uh, you get your, you know, your briefcase there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. What, what is your day to day activity? So I would say like in the morning, it's a lot of emails, answering emails, um, from different people. And then at around like, 10, 11 a.m., I'm probably fulfilling orders. So I fulfill all the orders uh, myself. So I'll, you know, package them, which takes some time. Uh, hopefully it takes some time. That means yeah. I got some orders. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then uh, I live pretty close to a post office. So I actually walk to the post office for like my <laughs> exercise. So I walk to the post office, get those delivered. And then I'll probably make some phone calls to different businesses that I've already been in contact with, uh, check in on like, if they need refills on bottles or anything like that. And then I'll go and make a few more just cold calls to businesses. And then I'm probably looking at our website, trying to see uh, what kind of improvements we can make there, checking on ads that we currently have running. Um, so like a lot of maintenance, I guess, on the day to day. And then the occasional hiccup or something that comes up that I need yeah. to fix the fire that you got to put out. Uh, but it's a lot of maintenance, definitely. And uh, just keeping up with like these multiple streams is your brother and your brother's brother-in-law yeah. are, are they uh, more in the kitchen doing so that? yeah so uh jeffrey which is uh my brother's brother-in-law he's more in the kitchen uh always curating new, new spices i mean he's really nailed it this last lemon pepper that he made is was really amazing um so that's kind of his main focus that and he does a lot of our accounting for us and then my brother is actually a computer science major. So he built our entire website from scratch. Um, he kind of helps with like a lot of the maintenance or any you know new things we want to add to the website. We put a lot of pride in our website that it's like pretty good for a small business. Um, like we want you to go on our website and not know that we're a small business. That's kind of our whole goal. So he does a lot of the computer stuff and also a lot of the outreach that I do as well. <coughs> Cause it does take more than just uh, one person to like try to get this 
What's your code. website? Uh, CampScoville.com. Okay. And, and Ryan, are you? Would you say that you're more so the face of the of the company? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I think it's more my personality than uh, theirs to be more like uh, front facing to the customer, more like I'm in a lot of like the social media videos and stuff like that. It's something that I enjoy as well, so I don't mind. So I would say I'm more of the face, but it's definitely like a, a three man job that we're constantly every day trying to improve our company. We always, we have a saying like 1%, we're just trying to get 1% better every single day. So like, no matter how small the win is, we just try to stack those small wins. Did I see correctly that you're at a, some sort of outdoor market also? Yeah, uh, we're at a couple outdoor markets. We're at a, a nearby, we're at a San Marino Cafe. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. Uh, yeah, it's right on um, Huntington? Huntington. Be on I Huntington. believe it's on Huntington, yeah. Um, we're in a lot of different shops like that. We're also in a, this one uh, brewery called Escape Brewery. Not sure if you've heard of that one. Escape? Yeah. They sell, they sell pizza and uh, beer, obviously. <laughs> um, that one's like really popular for us that we sell really well at. So we do have like our certain businesses that we know we, we do well at. And our whole goal with that is really just to get in front of the customer, you know, at by any means necessary. So we just want people to try our product and we think that's enough to where they'll get hooked, like you said, <laughs> and hopefully, you know, ride this ride and continue to up their spice level. I know you're doing, I don't know if it's called a campaign, but you're doing this thing on social media where you're cooking with a different letter of the alphabet. An yeah. Ingredient. <laughs> yeah. So we call it the alphabet grocery challenge. So it's um, A through Z. I'm on letter. I just did letter G right now. So um, we're trying to go through it, just kind of showing people all the kinds of food in a creative way that you could use uh, Camp Scoville on. So that's kind of the goal there. Like I said, I just made some French toast. Uh, I made a little bit more traditional uh, garlic bread uh spice that up so we're just trying to go with you know each food based on the letter i just find the ingredients in the grocery store and then make it at home uh fairly quickly and just kind of show our customers like how easy it is and how many different ways they could use our product and how's the response been have people been trying what you're doing and have they been submitting their own recipes yes. to you so i had a friend that actually was like dude i tried it on my french toast and it was actually so good i was yeah. like dude that's cool that you actually tried it you know um a lot of people i actually got an email this morning recently that about our alphabet grocery challenge <laughs> and they were like oh like it gave me like so many more ideas on like what i could cook on like i did a, a dino a dino nuggets you know those little dino nuggets i know those uh they're like the frozen dino nuggets like kids eat them yeah. okay i did a video on that and they're like um I love chicken nuggets, so I, I always throw my Camp Scoville <laughs> on it and before the air fryer and stuff. Uh, so like we're trying to we're trying to get people to you know use our product, find different ways to use it, and so that's kind of like the main goal. And it has gotten a good response. I'm um, hopefully by like letter Z, we're like even farther on it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who, whose idea was that? That was actually my brother's idea. Uh, we were looking for like a like you said like kind of like a campaign, kind of a consistent style that we could do on social media and that, and that was kind of like a play that kind of keeps us consistent and consistently posting but also gives our uh, customer like consistent content that we find like has like some type of benefit for them who comes up with your names i i uh, uh, that's kind of a collaboration yeah. i'd like to think i came up with a lot of them but oh, i yeah. tried to i tried to um, you know, think creatively. My brother came up with like the actual name Camp Scoville. And then I was like, what if the lowest one's like Boy Scout? We want to do like a Girl Scout one. That's like maybe like a, a sweeter mix. You know, they have these like sweet and spicy type of seasonings. So we're trying to do something like that as well. Oh, down yeah. the line. <laughs> you mentioned you wanted to do hot sauces later on. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to try this. Have you ever thought of um, a y yuzu pepper? Yeah, actually, yeah, we we are looking into that. So we're we're always trying to look into this. If we're going to do a hot sauce, we want to do something different, you know. And so we're definitely like that's a great idea with the yuzu pepper, because um, I feel like that would be like really different than what you oh, see out yeah. there, you know. I, I've never, you know, I, I would definitely try that. Um, yeah, the yuzu is what's what's difficult to come by, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's what you also have to think of with this is like. <laughs> I got to I need to be able to fulfill inventory, you know, like yeah. it's like this pepper can't be like as a small business, we can't afford to get like pepper X in our stuff, <laughs> you know, cause like we don't have a, we don't have like a pipeline for that, yeah. you know? So that's definitely always in mind too. Like, okay, we can get this product, we can get this pepper, this new flavor, this new hot sauce, but like we need to make sure we can make it sustainable and like still on brand. Like 
I, I like still somewhat healthy or at least a healthier alternative, you know, that's kind of important to us as well. In, in your alphabet challenge, have you done any, um, desserts or, or like pastries? <sighs> Not yet, but I do have some down the, down the line that I'm eyeballing. Uh, I do, I do have some because I, I think it does blend well. Like you were mentioning earlier, like this, the sweet and the spicy does kind of, it surprises people too. And it's kind of a, a little clickbaity because people are like, oh, what? Like a spicy uh, French toast, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. What's the best antidote for um, an overdose? I would say milk or like Greek yogurt. And I would say like before you're like, if you're like doing some type of challenge or something, I would say like having it before, like having some yogurt before or something kind of coating oh, to, coat, to yeah. kind of coat that that's kind of like a hack that I know people oh, do. Yeah. So I tried this and don't try this <laughs> at all. Okay. <laughs> I had this theory. I was like, Oh, it's, it's oil, right? So soap can get it off. Oh man. Oh. And, and so I tried it. I mean, it just, it was unpleasant, but it didn't work. <laughs> so it, two reasons. That's a good idea. Do it. <laughs> so I just wanted to see because because when it's when it's really hurting, like you're you're wanting to do, you're looking for any yeah. type of way out for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. And the relief from like let's say like a creamsicle, right? Like it's it's instant, but it's like very temporary. Like yeah. it just gives you seconds of relief. Yeah, and, and then, water doesn't help. Yeah, people no, think that yeah. it doesn't help at all. <laughs> so so I put soap, and I was like, you know, rub, like I was, I was trying to wash the oil off my tongue. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> so yeah. if anybody's out there is thinking about that, yeah, that, that yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> Definitely like some dairy, but then you might have other problems if you're lactose. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Ryan, we're going to get into the final segment of the show where we get to know uh, a little bit more about what you like in the San Gabriel Valley. Yeah. Ryan, this is the segment where we call the SGV3, where we get to know your three favorite places or experiences in the San Gabriel Valley. What is uh, number one? Yeah, so I, I want to start with a bagel exchange. I don't know if you guys have heard of bagel exchange. It's like this bagel uh, shop in on Main Street in Alhambra, and they kind of like, they show the different stock market. That's kind of like their theme is like oh. the stock market. It's a good place oh. if you want to like, I sometimes, you know, bring my briefcase, get some work done there, eat it really good bagel. They have good coffee. Oh, yeah. um, the owner's a really good guy. They got Cam Scoville there as well, if you want to try oh, it. <laughs> um, do, uh, do you like it on your bagel? Yeah, I, I like on cream cheese, on avocado. It's like so good. That's oh, yeah. like super good. Oh man, yeah. That's on, <laughs> I'm going to bring you guys a bottle as soon as this video is over. <laughs> I was just thinking, yeah, avocado for sure. Cream cheese, yeah, for sure. Oh man, like avocado toast. You put some of that on there. It blends very well. Like I said, like but yeah, Bagel Exchange, great company, great business owner. Um, I want to highlight them for sure because, I mean, they, I think they do really good on business, but more people need to know about them because if you like bagels, you want a morning bagel, they have they have you covered for sure. Awesome. And then uh, at number two, I have Motto Tea Cafe. And I'm sure you guys have heard of that. Uh, not too I don't far. know it. Nope. Uh, what, what is it called? Motto. Motto Cafe. Are you saying I'm M O T T O? T T O. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, they kind of have like different desserts, different drinks, like boba drinks and stuff like that. But they have these Japanese uh, souffle pancakes that are like oh. the best I've ever had easily. Really? And uh, it would be like 10 p.m. and my girlfriend's like, oh man, imagine one of those Japanese pancakes. And it's like the go-to spot, you know, if you're like, if you want a dessert late at night, I think you, you go there, you get a Japanese souffle pancake and you won't be disappointed. Oh. Oh, so at 10 p.m. when your girlfriend wants that, you, you have the option to go there. I'm the one that, I'm the one that has to go <laughs> oh, pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you do. Yeah, they're open late. Uh, they're busy, though. So just, just know that. But they have a lot of different good options. But I would oh. say, like, if you're going for the first time, try that Japanese pancake. That's down. Um, Valley. Just past the Hilton. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's like, what, two inches thick? And, and Yeah, it's, it's thick. And it's like they put that... Um, condensed milk over it and it, they got some fruit on it some mango uh, yeah man. see it yeah looks good yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i mean like if you've never been there you gotta try the, the japanese pancake i would say for sure that must be in focus plaza yeah i believe Is, so yeah. i believe so well you're still young enough where you can eat those things <laughs> at 10 o'clock at yeah. night and, and uh, it's yeah. okay <laughs> Like anything, like spice, moderation, right? <laughs> you know, you can have your reaper pepper, but moderation. <laughs> and, and what's the third? 
The third um, is uh, Pulciano's Deli. I hope I'm saying that right. It's on uh, Mission, right by the right by the Mission, near across the street from the Blossom Market Hall. Also a great spot. They have like the best deli sandwiches. I get the California Mafia. It has like all the meats in there, avocado. It's in this really nice cold sub if it's a hot day, which it, it is a lot in the San Gabriel Valley. Um, you get a nice cold sub from there. I feel like you're never dissatisfied. It's just like people, they're really nice, friendly. They're Italian. They're family owned. Uh, you feel good about supporting their business. And I think that's like a huge thing there. I really like it there. I think that was mentioned um, from Adela with San Gabriel Educational Foundation. She's related to them. So she was she she had them on their SGV on her SGV three, but she said that that's their her cousins. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, they're great people. Like I you know I would I would always uh, I used to live like literally a block away from that, so I would I would go on my walks <laughs> and just walk over to the deli and, and get a sandwich and a man. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. yeah, their stuff is really good. Definitely recommend. Have you asked them to carry your your? Uh, I was I was actually going to. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of uh, a lot of to go there, so. Um, we don't really uh, collaborate with to the to go places as much because we don't have we used to have like the to go packets but they're like they would go so quickly that it was hard to maintain the packets it's a lot easier to maintain like the bottles so i have thought about it though cuz they have a great like loyal fan base for sure I- i'm just curious like so so what you being the person who would go there what's your approach like are you just going in there cold and with uh, your product and like well, you know how would you do that yeah sometimes I, I go ahead so like if i could walk you through it like the first thing i do when i go into a business i usually i always order something because i'm like i'm not going to ask for something and not you yeah. know at least get something and you know support the business you know i don't want to be like i'm just here to yeah give you these bottles you know so i, I usually order something and then i'll ask the front person like, hey is the manager or, or the owner in today um, and if they are, then I'll speak to the owner and I'll, I usually say, you know, I have this company, Camp Scoville. We're a spicy seasoning company. And I like preface it. I'm like, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want, you know, to give you a bottle to try. And if you do like that bottle, like if you do like our seasonings and think it's an asset to your company, maybe you'll leave it out as like a an option for the customer. So that's kind of the angle I play. Low key. Low key, yeah. Um, I just try to, you know, gauge interest. Obviously, if they're if they don't like it themselves or don't think their customers will like it, you know, I understand then, okay, like, you know, you could have the bottle, like you don't have to leave it out or anything. But what I've noticed is usually the best way to like get into a place is like give them enough samples to where all the employees try it. And then the employees are kind of vouch for you. You know, Mm -hmm. like I had a lot of places where like, I, I didn't get the chance to talk to the owner, but I gave samples out to the employees. And then by the time I call the owner, they're like, oh yeah, I've already heard of you. Like, my employees can't shut up about you, <laughs> about your stuff. So that's like a way easier, like leg in the door, yeah, you know, cause yeah. they trust, you know, the people they employ and the people that work there, you know, their opinion. So I kind of play that angle as well. Yeah. I, I think we should carry it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, spice people, if, if, I think if people like spice, they're going to, they're going to like, they're going to like, this, yeah, and even if they, yeah. they don't. Thank you. Yeah. That's what we, that's what we try to do. Like just, you know, get people aware of it. Cause it is different. Like you said, like it's a little bit, you know, most people are used to hot sauce and stuff like that. So you do kind of have to like ease them into it. The idea of like using this as an alternative, you can still use your hot sauce, but it's like a submar- supplementary way of enjoying your spicy food. Yeah. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for coming today and sharing your story with us in yeah. our audience. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate if, it. If people want to get in touch with you or, or try your product, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. So it's um, at Camp Scoville on any social C-A-M-P-S-C-O-V-I-L-L-E. And then our website is campscoville.com. Uh, you can order on there. Um, we do free local delivery for SGV area. Um, so you can order on there, get free shipping and all that. So Awesome. Well, and, and what's the best seller? The best seller? I, I mean, lately it's been lemon pepper that we just dropped. Like people have really loved that. Um, I definitely want to get that to you guys. And then probably the original flavor, the Boy Scout Thai chili is like, the biggest seller because I think anyone with pretty much any spice tolerance can enjoy that one. So I would say that's the best seller. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you again for coming. We do appreciate it. And I, I think your company is going to be a, a great success. Yeah. Thank so, you guys. I yeah, really appreciate it. You. There you go. Another story in the books for you. We do appreciate you spending this time with us and uh, exploring uh, the origins of Camp Scoville. And uh, more than that, I hope you, you, whether you like chili or you don't uh, try it out. It sounds like there's a, a lot of different levels for you. And if you do try 
the ghost pepper or or the scorpion or the <laughs> Carolina Reaper, let us know because I, I'm curious what that experience yeah. is like. Um, you know, and and if uh, I assume that if you're if you're going for that, you're a chili head already. So, well, there's the episode for you. We do appreciate you spending this time. Uh, don't forget to check out our full back catalog of episodes on our website, mysgv.net. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing. And uh, don't forget to like and share. That really helps us out a lot. So until next week, we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us on the My SGV podcast. Check out more of our content on our website, mysgv.net. This show was produced by Russell Mono and edited by Victoria Allers of Kind Monster Productions. If you'd like to join us next week as we capture and share more stories from our diverse community, feel welcome. Nice mother. No, kind of mother.